how's it going? So I may sound a little bit different than normal. I've got a little bit of a respiratory thing going on. Where the bus is parked, there is some agricultural burning that goes on. And with them trying to burn stuff and it raining over the last few days, all it's done is smolder. And well, I don't feel so hot right now. Anyways, this video I actually started filming about four months ago. And we're gonna take a look at this Super Lube O-ring oil as a solution to make permobile shocks. Well, and actually any shocks, because a lot of quantum chairs, the Edge series, tend to have a lot of noisy suspension. But we're gonna see if this is a viable option to, flies. <laughs> we're gonna see if this is a viable option to make those noises shut up. Uh, short version is yes. This stuff is linked down below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. It's uh, a little bit hard to find, but it's a very specific product. It's not super cheap, it's maybe 12 to $18, depending on factors. But anyways, I've got some footage that I filmed four months ago, and we're gonna take a look at that first. Then I'm gonna be refilming a little bit of it because, well, I was using a blunt metal object to try and remove the shock dust seal, and you don't wanna do that. So anyways, let's go back in time. I'm gonna show you what this chair sounded like, and uh, then we're gonna take things apart and put some of this in there. Okay, I think I've let the shocks get sufficiently squeaky on this thing. Here, listen. So there you can tell as I move around, the factory shocks on the back are making noise. For reference, here we are sitting next to the thing and you'll be able to tell the sounds coming from right there. Even if I grab the side of the chair and This squeaking has been driving me absolutely insane. There's this other Otis, what do you call it? Solvent slash cleaning slash oil that I used on this previously, and it worked really well. But I recently forgot and or remembered that O-ring oil exists. And these shock seals are, well, they're probably a little bit more than O-rings. I still wanna give this a try. The problem is, I don't know how long this is gonna last. You can basically put anything on there. Like I could run around in a rainstorm and it would make this thing be quiet for a couple of days. So what we're gonna do is put a tiny bit of this on here, then I'm gonna test it for like a month. And then I'll be able to tell you if this stuff actually lasts or not. This chair, as you may recall, I swapped over the C500 shocks to it. And it was perfect because it was almost like Permobile intended for these to be here. They have the adjustable rebound control and the plastic's even cut out. These things are perfect, no noise whatsoever. They're oil dampened. This being an F3 uses nitrogen or air or whatever they call it inside these ones. And for some reason they start getting noisy. Okay, back to current day me. At this point, I proceeded to get out a coat hanger and bend it into a sharpened hook and attempted to scratch at the dust covers that's not what you want to do. So I've refilmed the rest of this so you can see the proper way to take care of this issue. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, you should probably completely remove the shocks from the chair, but me being exquisitely lazy and or insert excuse here, there's another way we're going to do it using a hotel key card. Here we have my 2021 F3, and basically we're going to be putting some of that O-ring oil on these rear shocks. Oh man, my voice is not doing so hot. But we're gonna pull this top cover off of the back. That'll give us a little bit better access to things. And then we may pull the shock off the chair, I haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and run my seat lift up here. If you don't have a seat lift, that's fine. Basically what we're trying to do is get to these little cover uh, thumb screws here on each side. And it is possible to get to these and to remove this top cover without lifting up your seat. But in my case, since I have one, it's just easier to do it this way. And just so wanna make sure you don't get your arm on the seat lift post because that is covered in grease. Now I'm not sure just yet if we're gonna actually pull these shocks off, but I'm gonna put the jack under the chair just so I don't have to mess with it later if we decide to do that. Okay, we've got both of our thumb screws out and where did I put those? Ah, here they are on the floor. 
Just go ahead and pop this cover off. Man, what is it? There's this one fly that got in here and it won't leave me alone. It's like there's a thousand square feet. Why has it got to be right here? <laughs> now in my chair, there's a little piece of Velcro and some adhesive that normally sticks to the back of the circuit breaker and holds this back cover up. But that's pulled up on mine, so that's just gonna kind of flop down like that. So again, on this chair, the front shocks are off of a C500. These are oil dampened. I've had no problems with these. They don't make any noise at all. On the three series chairs, however, they use these air or nitrogen filled shocks and they tend to make some noise over time, especially if you're in dusty environments and whatnot. I use the air compressor to kind of blow off the chair a little bit. The other factor here on my chair that I think makes these a little bit more noisy is I have adjusted these way down so they have a lot more travel. So these things are moving a lot more than they would in the stock configuration and are a little bit more susceptible to dust and stuff getting in there. Now, I put this O-ring oil on here four months ago and they're not making any noise at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it again here just to show you guys how this works. If you look real close at this shock absorber, you can see that we've got the metal shaft up here. Then there's sort of this little rubber boot right here. That is a dust cover. You could in theory put some of that oil right there, but the problem is this dust boot is going to prevent it from getting all the way down inside there and getting to the actual seal that goes over that metal shaft. So we need to remove this dust boot. So just looking here a little bit, the front shock has two bolts that are on the outside. The rear one, one of these is back here, and that reminds me of kind of annoying to remove. Actually, there isn't clearance to get my wrench right here. Actually, let's try. Yeah, there's not quite enough clearance. These Allen wrenches don't have the speed tips on them. Ooh, coloring's weird. These don't have the speed tips on them. Normally, if you have that, you can go in at an angle and it's not a problem but I don't really feel like removing all these plastics right now, especially since I went around and installed a bunch of bolts and screws and things like that. So we're gonna do this the quick and dirty way. What you wanna do is kinda count how many threads there are here on the back of the shock and just remember that because during this process, you kinda have to turn this spring so you can get access to different parts. Uh, so you can get access to different areas here, but you notice when I do that, the whole thing turns. Now you want to make sure you're not sitting in the chair for this. I think to make this a little bit easier though, I'm going to lift up the back of the chair just a little bit. See if I can reach this. There we go. I'm lifting it up just enough to get these, uh, to get the weight off these wheels. Now, if you still have the front shocks on here, um, they're probably going to be squeaky as well. Just over time, that's what happens. But, I can see there are basically three and a half threads sticking out the back there. And I'm just gonna remember that. I'm gonna turn this spring so that we have access to the edge of that dust boot. There you can see it right there. It's that little line. And I'm gonna take this hotel key card, which is made of plastic. And we're gonna kind of work that in here. And there's a little lip that this dust boot catches on. And we're gonna try and pull this forward so we can gain access to the actual shock seal that's underneath here. You don't want to use anything metal on this because if you slip and hit that shaft, any sort of scratches or grooves, no matter how small they are, are going to take out the seal on that shock once that part of it goes into, well, back into the shock basically. Okay, so I just kind of push that forward there a little bit. Move this up just a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna try not to bump my camera mount, but you can see here our little dust boot is now forward and our actual seal is right here at the corner of the card. We're gonna take this stuff. It's uh, sort of a food grade silicone, uh, really awesome stuff. And we're basically gonna put one drop of it right there. So let me turn this a little more. There we go. We're gonna put one drop of this right here on that seal. Flies are landing on me again. Go away, flies. Then I'm just gonna use the edge of this card to kinda move that oil around and get it onto the face of that seal. There we go. 
Now I'm just gonna grab the, grab the side of the chair and kind of flex the suspension a little bit. Oh wait, we can't do that because it's on the jack. Um, well, anyways, that's basically it. <laughs> you put a drop of the stuff in there and uh, push your dust cover back on. Actually, I'm gonna do just a tiny bit more. You don't wanna go nuts with this stuff because it'll leak all over the place and pick up dirt and kind of make a mess. So spread it around there again. I've heard that Hilton key cards work the best. <laughs> and we're just gonna go ahead and use this. Let's push the dust cap back on. Actually, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, there we go. If you look right here, you can see there's a little bit of a lip. The edge of the card is right there in it. And this rubber boot snaps over that, basically. And in theory, that keeps a lot of the dust and dirt, and <coughs> designed to keep a lot of the dust and dirt and stuff out of here. It's kind of a little tricky to get back on there, but if you just sort of get one edge of it on there, there you can see it sort of snapped on. I can go around the other side and it snaps into place. Then I wanna go ahead and rotate this to make sure that all sides have engaged. There we go, looks good. And that's basically it. Actually, come to think of it, um, I'm gonna pull one of the quantum chairs over here and show you how to do that. I don't remember on those, I think they have a dust boot, but I can't remember. But the idea is no matter which chair you're gonna use this stuff on, you gotta figure out if it has a dust boot and then pull it back because simply putting this stuff right there is not gonna get it far enough in to actually work. Okay, so the jack was pretty much completely unnecessary and we don't have to mess with the front shocks, so no big deal there. I think on these ones, uh, let's see if we can see down here. Yeah, so the front shocks don't have a dust boot. They have sort of this little rubber bumper donut, which is kind of like a bump stop, but it appears as though that does not have anything to hook on. So yeah, depending on your chair and depending on the shocks, you may not have a dust boot on there. Okay, and now basically you do the same thing on the other side and that's about all there is to it. So I'm gonna put this back on. And of course, because Permobile, there's these weird little plastic. Oh, did that break? I don't think so. There's these weird little plastic clips that like to come off. Wow, I got it in the first try. All right, cool. Usually it takes a lot of uh, fiddling around to get that cover reinstalled. But what I was trying to do earlier, if the jack hadn't been under there, is grab the side of the chair and just basically work the suspension a little bit. Although realistically, if you just hop in your chair and run around, it'll be fine. But yeah, that's it, pretty simple. Let me grab a quantum and we'll take a look at that real quick. Alrighty, here we have an Edge 3 Stretto. Now on these chairs, there's a lot more components to the suspension. The Edge 3 series chairs I've found with these newer sort of golden colored shocks, these don't have nearly the same issues with things making noise as the Edge 1 and the Edge 2 series do. But you can tell it's an Edge 3, I'm pretty sure, by these golden colored shocks. So let's zoom in here and see if we can see anything useful. Uh, these are much larger springs, but, oh, where's my flashlight? These do not have any dust covers. You can't see it because the springs are kind of right there in the way. Actually, let me move the camera here. Yeah, so right there, if you look, you can see the silver bar, and then you can see the top of the shock seal right there, and there's no dust covers whatsoever. So in this case, uh, I think, yeah, this doesn't really fit in there super well, but, and this chair is not squeaking right now. I'm just showing this in case you have one of these that is, but I think we can just kind of mash this in here. Yeah, and squeeze one drop on there. There we go. And then let's flex our suspension a little bit. I'm just grabbing this front caster and kind of moving it a little bit. And then we also have these gas struts as well and these have similar types of seals. Because these are right down here by the ground, these caster wheels are gonna be spraying dirt and filth up onto them. So they can wind up making some noise as well. 
Same thing here, just get a little tiny bit of this stuff on there. And then use your card or some other plastic tool and just kind of push it up in there so it comes in contact with that seal. Then flex the suspension a little bit and you can wipe off the excess. Anyway, so that's all there is to it. This stuff's pretty easy to use and yeah, it seems to work. Whatever chair you may have probably has shock absorbers on it. So just look around and try to find the metal shaft and the part where it goes into the actual body of the shock. And then you wanna get a drop of that stuff right on there. So yeah, pretty easy, I think. Let's look at the back here. Yep, same thing on the back. You can just see where it goes in right there and there's no dust boot at all. But once again, all the Quantums that I've encountered that have these golden colored shocks, well, except for the Forefront One, which they started leaking, but that's a completely different application. Um, I've not had any issues with these making noise. So, um, <laughs> dust. This stuff being food grade though and really clean, it's not gonna damage anything. It's basically the most inert lubricant that you can use anywhere on your chair. Obviously, if you glob a bunch of it on there, it's gonna make a mess and attract dirt, but I think, in my opinion, <laughs> this is safe to use on almost any surface on the chair. Now, metal on metal contact stuff, um, it would probably work, but in places like these tracks here for the uh, seat lift mechanism, you probably wanna use actual grease on that. But as far as the suspension goes, this stuff ain't gonna hurt anything. Man, I so don't even know what's going on right now. You know how they say uh, time flies when you're sick and psychotic. Um, I think one more good night of sleep, I should be good to go. But where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Yes, been running this stuff for about four months now. Seems to be working great. Fly, what? There's just one fly, go away. Anyways. My personal opinion is such that I would use that O-ring oil on any of these chairs in here. But then again, um, well, I have no idea what I'm talking about, so do what you want. <laughs> Anyways, I think I've run out of words, so hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know if you have an issue with squeaking shocks on your chair and what brand and model it is. Uh, by the way, don't use WD-40 or penetrating oil or stuff like that. Um, it's not, not what it's designed for. He, th this O-ring stuff is designed, uh, so it's very high viscosity and it stays in place. It's kind of like the silicone version of Lucas oil stabilizer. I don't know if you've ever spilled that stuff, but not even gasoline or thinner can clean that up. This fly. How do I not have an electric fly swatter in here? Okay. I'm going to stop talking now and edit this video and, uh, yeah. See you tomorrow on the live stream. Up. I went ahead and cleaned up the chair a little bit while I was down there, but now, as you can hear, no more shock noise. Just some of the other typical permobile noises. But yeah, no more shock creaking. Mm -hmm.